Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a quick preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first one is a UFO out of Quebec, Canada. Second, I have this uh, UFO out of Singapore, almost crashes into an airplane, they claim. Uh, this is out of Winters, California. You see this uh, cigar shape moving across the sky. Also have this other one out of um, Abilene, Texas. This video out of Abilene, Texas. We see this thing. It's not necessarily the clearest video, but uh, there's definitely something there. Uh, this is an amazing uh, one and a half hour documentary. Actually, it's you know it's several different um, stories, but mainly it's about this guy Martin Stubbs, who um, worked at a cable broadcast facility, and because he had the equipment, he was able to uh, download. Um, transmissions from all of the shuttle flights and um, he caught some pretty amazing things uh, let's see this is also a video about the secret space shuttle a lot of times um, whenever they would uh, put up the space shuttle there was always these additional uh, astronauts on board um, doing special assignments and things like that and you know apparently they were a lot of times they were doing um, top secret missions up there yeah, a lot of times they would um, send up these payload specialists with the astronauts. And you know, usually the payload specialists were working on uh, top secret stuff up there. So we'll take a look at that. Um, these are videos of what uh, the sky on other planets look like. This happens to be Venus. This is the surface of Venus. This was taken from the, uh, the Russian Venera program where they landed a probe on Venus. So if you want to know what Venus looks like, this is it. Um, here is this, it's a longer video, but the only, one, you know, only one I was really concerned with is this last one here. This is supposed to be a shark and you can see, you know, here's a comparison of what a, a person would look like, but check, I think this is a Megalodon. Anyways, um, this is a article, actually there's two videos, but you know, it, it talks about all of the uh, the polygon um, architecture that went on in the past, and you know how how I believe it wasn't you know done by uh, Earthlings. It wasn't yeah. This wasn't created by hunter gatherers. You know, these are hunter gatherers. They did not create any of these polygonal structures. So we'll take a look at that too. So uh, let me go back to the beginning here. Let me go full screen. This is, uh, like I said, this is out of Quebec, Canada. Oh, yeah, this guy's all over the place. <laughs> well, you can see how, you know, how high it actually is. So when he zooms in with his uh, uh, phone, I'm sure it's hard for him to keep that thing. Uh, centered, uh, you know, I, I've tried taking things in, in the sky and it's, it's very, very hard to uh, maintain a, a steady hand. You really need a tripod doing these shots. But, you know, but thank God this guy uh, shot full screen, huh? You know, th this isn't uh, a graduate of the filmmaking school of uh, vertical cinematography. Thankfully, that's, that's, uh, that's a, uh, let me see if I can get a nice, if I can stop it, nice clear shot right there. That's about as clear as you're going to get. Hmm, I wonder what that is. But the whole thing is, you know, is him trying to um, get this thing in, fo er, er, in, in a good frame, and he, he's not able to do it. You really need a tripod for this. But anyways, let me go on to this next video. Uh, this one is, like I said, near collision with UFO captured on camera with Singapore Airlines. See if this video is still going to be in here. Yeah, I think it uh, it happens. Yeah, you know, actually, it happens near the near the end. Thank you. 
Oh, I know what's going to happen. I think um, this plane goes into a dive and then just before it goes in here, watch this. Here it comes. It's going to come up now. They're going into a dive. Oh, I missed. There it goes. Do you see that? Watch it again. There it goes. <laughs> uh, I mean, one more time. Let's see. I don't want to go back as far. It's at, oh, it's at 103. So let me just go back to about uh, 58 seconds. Let me see if I can. Oh, oh, I'm. Okay, let's see it at 102. It probably shows up right about one. There it here. There oh there it is right there. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But uh it's amazing that it, yeah, it seems like these guys are going into a dive. But anyways, and then and then it just ends. That's all this uh video does. Okay, let me go on to this next one here. Yeah, this is kind of interesting here. This is out of Winters, California, and this was just put up on the or this just happened on the twelfth. Now let me go back. Start this, and you'll see this uh, object come right here, right next to this tree. Here it comes. There it is. And then it's going to disappear for a second. And then reappear. And move on. Look at that three lights. Look at the other yeah, three lights. Um, yeah, then, you know, this is a craft that's been filmed, photographed hundreds of times. I can say hundreds, definitely hundreds of times. So, you know, these aren't, um, these aren't visitors, folks. These are, to me, it's pretty obvious that, uh, you know, they're crafts that are sharing the planet with us. And we just happen to, to see them occasionally whenever they're, you know, they're doing their routine, whatever routines they're involved in. I'm sure some of them are coming to, to check us out and things like that. But um, we're not alone on this planet. You know, and uh, thinking back to all of these UFO videos that, you know, that have been um, played for all these years, you know, going back to Roswell and th think about all the, the UFO shows that are on, are on cable. Right? How many of you people that are into UFOs have been watching all the different UFO, UFO shows on cable? So, you know, this 180-day um, disclosure, what are they going to disclose to us? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speculate that they're going to disclose that we're not, you know, that we're not alone on this planet. Because what else could they tell us as if we don't already know that, you know, that there's all of these crafts out here? But anyways, let me, let me play this one here. This one, it's not... Uh, the easiest to see. Let's see. Let me turn this thing down too. Because these guys are, you know, driving instead of uh, stopping and filming this thing. But yeah, you can see there's something right there. There it is. Yeah, this isn't the um, you know the best video. I don't can I don't understand why he, this guy sees a UFO and he can't uh, just pull over for a sec. You're gonna get some some amazing footage, but uh, yeah, that's it right there. Uh, it's you know it's three minutes and it's just you know that just this bouncing around. So I'm not gonna play any more of it, but I will leave a link in the description. Let me go to this video here. Yeah, this video here. Um, there's a lot involved in it. It's an hour and a half. But, you know, it talks about NASA's secret transmission. But this guy is Martin Stubbs. And um, he worked at a cable broadcasting uh, station out of, um, I think it was Toronto, somewhere in Canada. But, um, you know, because he had the equipment, he had the opportunity, he decided to download all of the transmissions from every single shuttle flight. He said that he had all this additional tape. So as soon as the shuttle took off, he'd put the tape in and hit play. And if, if, the, um, 
if the the shuttle mission lasted 10 days, he taped for 10 days. If it lasted six days, he taped for six days. But he says he did not stop that tape until the shuttle landed. And, you know, every eight hours, he would put in another tape, another tape. So he was really good about that. And um, apparently he captured, um, well, he, he says there's three different phenomena. He captured some, some type of object uh, in our orbit, you know, in, in the sky, but he also says he captured these two things. Let me see if I can go to that section. Story. Yeah, well, yeah, he, you know, he talks about these round objects here, and, you know, and this goes back to uh, STS-75 when they were supposedly testing some kind of new uh, energy gathering um device and it broke off but according to martin that uh, you know this notion that it broke off you know isn't true he says that you know that this thing was specifically most likely made in order to draw all of these things um out but let's see let me go back to city that of why no one from 19 from the year 1991 till 1994 had bothered to look at any other footage. And I was quite naive and wasn't aware it was all being downloaded because I bought into the popular culture or the urban myth that they were scrambling at it and it wasn't available since 48. I've been an editor for 25 years as well as everything else. And I can, I, I spend an awful lot of my day looking at videotape in, in, at amazingly fast speeds, reviewing people's programs for critique reasons and things. Sure. My eyes are trained, and I kept seeing something. So when I started breaking the frames down, I found you still couldn't find it. You'd go from fr this frame to this frame, and there'd be a quick movement. So then I, I had to get a videotape recorder, an SVH machine, an older model, funny enough, not the digital model, that literally when you roll the thing, it would break the frames into, into fields. And in reality, there are 60 individual pictures that make up one second of video. And that's when I found them. So you, you were finding these on one of those 60 frames? Is, one is, of the yeah, there, he was finding these objects here. And like he said, it would only come up in a half a frame, which means that they were going by in a half a second. And, uh, you know, initially I thought that maybe these were just like specks of dust or something. But according to some of the astronaut um, dialogue that he happened to listen to, some, sometimes these objects would, would float around the astronaut's faces and then take off in an instant. Um, and, you know, and then also, let me see if I can find uh, this, these other things that he talks about that were taken on sts 75 uh yeah 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 this thing here well you know what uh, let me at the end here we go yeah this is um you know what he's talking about how Now, yeah, you know, NASA wants to say that these are dust particles or these are um, ice crystals. But, you know, I mean, you can obviously see that these things are moving at different speeds and in different directions. And yeah, and look at all those other things that are flying by. Those aren't comets. You know, like, like look at this thing here. Yeah, you know, and initially in this um, footage, they're, they're looking for the um, ISS, the International Space Station. Right, amongst all of this and you see look at how many of these things are out there and remember you know um, you can't see this with the naked eye these whatever these things are they can only be seen um, with uh, infrared in the infrared spectrum and another thing you know because I you know I've made a, a video about this before but uh, let me see if I can find the uh, the spot where it shows it um, stretching out into space. Yeah, right here. They zoom with their incredible zoom in on it. And you see some of these 
these uh, spheres in front of the tether, and some of absolutely clearly, no problem at all, they're behind the tether. And if the tether is 12 miles, and these are half the size of the tether going behind it at 100 miles away, they're not specks of ice. Yes, you know, thing, right. But, you know, because they know exactly how long this thing is, this is 12 miles long, and they know the distance that it is from the space shuttle, they're able to determine the size um, of these, you know, of the here, like this, like these, these things going by. Here, here's another one. Right, they can, let me go back to that. If you've ever seen a hornet, this tether, um, they, some of these, these uh, spheres in front of the tether, and some of absolutely clearly, no problem at all, they're behind the tether, and if the tether is 12 miles, and these... Yeah, okay, yeah, right, so because they know the distance of this, you know, they're able to determine the size of these things. And they have determined that these things are anywhere from two miles to five miles wide. Let me repeat that. These things are two miles to five miles wide. And they are all over the place. Um, if you, you know, if you, if you look up the, uh, the footage, STS-75, like, you know, I've, I've done a video on it, but let me see, I think this is part of it here. Yeah, look at all of these. The, yes, yeah, a lot of these things aren't stars. These are, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever these round things are, I mean, I liken them to like some type of um, space bovines or, you know, like, or yeah, some type of like, um, yeah, like they're, they're, they're some kind of organism, but they're not, you know, they're not, um, they're not spaceships or anything like that. I think they're like these giant space creatures or animals or, you know, something you want to call them, but I don't think they have, they're necessarily that intelligent. There's some type of animal, like a, like a, like a space animal, but apparently they live in, in low earth orbit. You know, there, there's a, there's a bunch of them out there here. Yeah. You can see them all moving around. You know, so, so the people in the space shuttle, oh yeah, you know what? You can't see them with, with these things with the naked eye. You can only see these things in the infrared spectrum. So I think if you're in the space shuttle, you can't see them with your eyes. But apparently, you know, these things are, are all over the place. And, and um, Martin also mentions in this where there's a spacewalk going on. And one of the astronauts tells the other astronaut, hey, you know, you got this thing at your 10 o'clock. And the other astronauts like, um, don't worry about it. It's like, you know, and then he, you know, he mentions like, look, when you're out in space and one astronaut says, hey, you know, there's something you should be concerned about. And the other astronauts like, don't worry about it. No, no, no. If there's something in space and it could be potentially life threatening, you should be worried about it. So it's obvious that that second astronaut was trying to deflect and then later on, you hear Houston, you know, telling these guys to stay on vector to, you know, basically to stop talking about those things. But uh, this is an hour and a half video. Um, I'll leave a link to it. I watched it yesterday. I mean, actually, this is probably my third time watching this video, but um, it's very, very, very revealing. So I would definitely check it out. Let me go on to this next one. Yeah, this video here is also very interesting because it talks about uh, the secret space shuttle and how they were all um, these uh, payload specialists that would go up um, on, on some of these missions. And the payload specialists were basically spies working on um, secret military um, projects. Let me play a little bit of this. Routine shuttle flights they were actually being used to launch and track classified equipment such as spy surveillance satellites. The first of these classified flights was STS-4 Columbia, launched on June 27, 1982. Its secret payload was known as Cryogenic Infrared Radiance Instrument for Shuttle, or Cirrus, which was supposed to test infrared sensors for a future surveillance satellite called Teal Ruby. The second of these flights was STS-51C Discovery, launched on January 24, 1985. Curiously, for the first time in NASA history, there was no pre-launch public affairs commentary for this shuttle until nine minutes before liftoff. Little is known of the shuttle's payload besides a vague sentence on the NASA website which reads, quote, The U.S. Air Force inertial upper stage IUS booster was deployed and met the mission objectives. 
Anyways, I can't, you know, play this whole thing, but it's 11 minute. But uh, again, you know, this is um, re revealing information here. So uh, I'll put a link to that. You can check it out. Uh, this video, first real images of the sky on other planets. This is what the sky looks like on other planets. Like I said, you know, this is Venus. This is actually what Venus looks like. This is the Venera probe sitting on the surface of Venus. But um, this, uh, this whole video, you know, it's 10 minutes. It has other photos of um, uh, the surface. What does the sky on the famous red planet look like? Unlike Mercury and the Earth's moon, Mars has an atmosphere, but it's extremely thin. In addition, the Martian atmosphere contains innumerable dust particles, which ensure that the light rays that hit the red planet are very strongly dispersed. This means that even during the day, no stars can be seen in the Mars sky despite the thin planet atmosphere. Here, you know one thing about Mars atmosphere. Mars atmosphere is, is just like Earth's atmosphere. Uh, here, you know, I think at this point we know that NASA has been lying to us. Most of the, you know, most government agencies routinely lie to us. Well, according to what I have read, Mars has a normal atmosphere just like Earth, and it has blue skies. It doesn't have this, you know, red tint. You know the the um, the soil may definitely be red, but the atmosphere, it's it's a blue atmosphere just like Earth's. But anyways, uh, check this video out. I'll leave a link in the description. Let me go on to this next video here. Yeah, this is um, she you know talks about the five most mysterious and unexplained sea creatures. Um, the first four are kind of boring and not really that interesting, but this one here is what I find the most interesting. Check this out. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Mariana Trench, it's thought to be the deepest part of any of the world's oceans and is located in the Western Pacific. Now, its precise depth is hazy, but it's thought the trench is about 6.8 miles deep. At these depths, it's hard to believe anything could survive, but surprisingly, there are many fish and living organisms down there, which I will talk more about in a documentary about the Mariana's Trench. Anyway, the Japanese scientists were studying an area not far from the trench called the Suruga Bay. They had submerged a container with special bait at a depth of around one mile in hopes of capturing on camera whatever wanted to feed on it. This is a common way of videoing and identifying new and existing sea creatures. At first, the camera picked up a few small known sea creatures followed by a shoal of rare deep sea sharks that measured six foot long. If this wasn't exciting enough for the researchers, the sharks scattered quickly and a huge creature came into view. Its size cannot be justified on the video footage, but the researchers said it would have been between 30 to 50 feet in length. Just know the Guinness World Record for the largest shark is 37 feet, so if the proportions the researchers have given are correct, this could be the largest shark ever recorded. Take a look. Remember the size of the, you know, the human that they, that photo that they had of what a human would look like compared to this thing. And, you know, and this isn't the um, only footage of this. There is uh, a dish or, or a different footage of, um, of a similar creature. But I think this is a um, a megalodon. Scientists aren't exactly sure what type of shark it is, and people have said it could be the long thought to be extinct megalodon, the gigantic monster of the sea that lived over two million years ago and is labeled the largest, most powerful predator in history. But. Well. That's it for this video. That's all I want to play. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out. Uh, this last link here, it talks about, um, there's actually, there's two videos on here. It talks about, you know, this, this po uh, polygonal construction. Um, here, look at this. Look at the size of this stone that, uh, that the first people who started construction on planet Earth, this is what they they started building, okay? They just right off the bat, supposedly um, uh, 
Neolithic man supposed to crawl out of the cave and then start cutting stones this this big? I don't think so. I yeah I, I and you know and then there's this uh, this type of construction that's found on on every single continent. You know look and yeah and at the the cut or the cuts are so precise you can't put a piece of paper in there. Um, let's see. Yeah, here, look, look at this, this polygonal w wall and, you know, and this, this is found in other places. I think this is in Athens or Greece or someplace, but this is also found in, uh, South America. And again, you know, these are generally the bottom, the foundations. So these were the first stones built. And, uh, let's see this, this video is the same thing talks about, you know, all of, all of the similar, oh yeah, this is, um, Long, Long U, oh no, yeah, this is Long U Cave, Petra, India, right? So whatever was cutting this was leaving the same machine uh, tools or the machine marks. You hear this is, um, this is Long U Cave, but look at, you know, there was some, some machine that was cutting this and you know what? That machine isn't around today which means it probably left the planet. But um, one thing I want to point out, you know, these are the, these are earthlings. These are hunter gatherers. Okay. Th th these are people that, okay. If you look at um, this representation here, you know, this is um, how long humans have been on planet earth. You know, each roll here represents 6,000 years. So for, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, humans, okay, these people here, right? These people, these, these, the hunter gatherers. Okay. These are, these are all hunter gatherers, right? If we, if you got into a time machine and came back to planet earth at any time during this period, this is who you would run into. You would run into these people and exact, and even in during this period as you know, when suddenly, right, suddenly Neolithic man just started growing crops all of a sudden, literally overnight, right? But these people didn't change. These people still continue to do, you know, live their lives however it lives. So I believe that, that this architecture, this style of architecture came from another planet, had to have. And another thing, you know, the people that, um, like, especially in the Mediterranean that built all of these things, for instance, the Minoans, the Mycenaeans, uh, the, the Etruscans, you know, all, all of those, um, cultures, those early civilizations around the Mediterranean that built these amazing structures, look, they didn't have melanin in their skin. Like all of these other earthlings do. These are earthlings. They have melanin in their skin. Why are there people who are on this planet with a completely different culture that's unlike all the other cultures on planet Earth? And, in the end, and none, none of these cultures here are building megaliths. Okay? They, these people don't have a history of building megaliths. So where did, you know, where did the... Um, where did the knowledge and the skill required to build megaliths come from? Right, required to build these things. I propose that it was brought here intact. You know, the, the whole notion of Western civilization, you know, of European culture, I think that was brought from another planet. And the reason why I believe that is because none of these people, okay, these are the people that are, that have been living on every continent on this planet. And, you know, and here, when people talk about, oh, well, you know, um, if you live in the snow, you don't need melanin. Well, no, these people live in the snow. Their entire civilization has existed in the snow. They have melanin in their skin still. So, um, yeah, that's, that's that. Like I said, you know, this is a um, very interesting representation of, of how humans have developed. And all of a sudden, like literally overnight, we just started farming. 
And like all of these cultures all, all say, like who, who taught you to farm? They, they always point up or they always say, you know, the angels taught us or the sky people taught us how to farm. To me, you know, that to me indicates that, yeah, the whole notion of the European or Western culture, agriculture that was brought here from another planet. Uh, and again, you know, because the, the people that, um, that did build all of this, they didn't have melanin in their skin. I'm, I would propose that they came from a planet that was further away from a sun. So they, they didn't need melanin. But uh, anyways, um, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.